hi everyone and yeah so welcome to uh, this mct class on the whatsapp directors welcome back again in the last class what we have learned we have learned about the different uh, structures of this vasodilators in the anti angines like amyl nitrate and nitroglycerin and penta erythritol tetranitrate and followed by the isosorbide dinitrate and dipredamol okay so most of the drugs are like these are all called as organonitriles or nitrodilators except dipyridone is a non nitro i mean uh, dilator what what we call okay so in the next i mean uh, our, in the next i mean uh, we are going to be learned about the the mechanism of action of these vasodilators or our organonitriles okay so basically when you uh, when when we are going to be learn the mechanism of action of vasodilators we need to recall or remember the uh, what exactly which is uh, we need to understand the mechanism of vascular smooth muscle called vsm and pacemaker cells okay so have you ever thought of like how our heart is beating okay so our heart beat and uh, the contraction and relaxation mechanism of uh, this i mean uh, these cells or pacemaker cells or this vascular smooth muscle is responsible for the our heart beat okay so the main key important thing is about the the vascular smooth muscle is the key and important thing here okay so the entire i mean uh, the uh, pressure like feel, feeling in the i mean angina or uh, heart right is because of the the fluctuations in the these i mean uh, relaxation and uh, the um, followed by the, the contraction of this vascular smooth muscle okay so i mean uh, we are we have used to learn very extensively into the college point of view but uh, for our medicinal chemistry point of view to understand the, the vascular smooth muscle is the main and key responsible i mean uh, muscle which is involved in the the contraction and relaxation okay so which leads to the i mean relaxation feeling like okay, uh, pressure like feeling is because of the this vascular smooth muscle okay so we know that right the uh, the contraction and uh, the relaxation mechanism of this vascular smooth muscle vsm is completely depending upon the the intracellular uh, like potassium and calcium ions and followed by the extracellular potassium and calcium ions okay so due to the increased or uh, decreased level of these two ions okay inside the in vascular smooth muscle and outside the uh, vascular smooth muscle is responsible for the the contraction and relaxation mechanism okay so in vascular smooth muscle uh, relaxation as well as the the uh, um contraction so uh, depending upon the number of um, different factors along with the uh, this uh, uh, ion, this ions like calcium plus 2 as well as the potassium plus okay. so these are all different i mean uh, important factors or targets which are i mean responsible uh, for the the relaxation and smooth muscle i mean uh, relaxation is contraction mechanism of vsm smooth muscle okay so the, like uh, if we consider like calcium channel blockers and potassium channel openers like and uh, alpha adrenoreceptor antagonist like uh, endothelin antagonist and, and angiotensin receptors and followed by the direct acting and nitro nitro vasodilators okay but these are all different uh, aspects which we are going to be learning in the next upcoming classes like calcium channel blockers or uh, like uh, angiotensin inhibitors like etc but our main focus is about the okay, uh, nitrodilators or our vasodilators okay how they are i mean involved in the this uh, relaxation and contraction mechanism of vsm smooth muscle okay yep so uh, when it comes to the nitrodilators okay nitrodilators also one of the main important because nitrodilators are nothing but organonitriles okay or vasodilators mainly they will release the this nitric oxide okay Uh, inside the uh, this vsm okay and that leads to the the increase of this nitric oxide uh, concentration nitric oxide is a free radical the concentration of nitric oxide leads to the some of the relaxation mechanism of this vascular smooth muscle okay in the next upcoming slide we are going to learn the how exactly the how exactly the the uh, organonitriles or uh, vasodilators or uh, nitro uh, dilators okay how they are showing their exact mechanism of action okay so here in this slide we are going to be learned about the these organ nitrates or nitrodilators how they are showing their mechanism of action or mode of action uh, during the this i mean uh, angina or nothing but i mean uh, angina especially like uh, the pressure like feeling in the heart okay how these organ nitrates are relieving this pressure like feeling okay, by showing their mechanism of action okay 
So already mentioned right so the entire I mean uh, the pressure like feeling or release of that pressure like feeling is depending upon the the vascular I mean, uh, smooth muscle relaxation and contraction okay. Now so if the vascular smooth muscle is like uh, <coughs> relaxed okay then we used to deal with the pain of okay heart pain or angina okay. Now so <coughs> this uh, like this this feelings like right now this rather like feeling how it is relieved by the nitrodilators okay first okay so the mechanism of vas vascular smooth muscle right vascular smooth muscle relaxant action of nitrodilators is like a glycerol trinitride and calcium channel blockers okay that means whatever the I mean glycerol trinitride or isosorbyl dinitride they, they all show this similar kind of mechanism of action okay so what is the main role of these organ nitriles okay because these organ nitriles are nitrodilators or vasodilators what they will do the main role is so they have the number of nitro groups like this like trinitride there are three nitro groups okay isosorbyl dinitride there are three nitro groups okay amyl nitride right also there is a nitro group okay so what they all do okay they all uh, they supposed to all releases the the nitric oxide okay so in the molecule when they enter into the this vascular smooth muscle they releases the nitric oxide okay this nitric oxide is a free radical this nitric oxide is a free radical okay so yeah free radical means right uh, any kind of organic compound having the one single uh, odd unpaired electron in their structure is called as a free radical this no acts as a free radical okay this no acts as a free radical okay the moment the uh, the free I and mean, uh, nitric oxide is releases okay what it will do it will try to activate the this uh, cycloguanyl uh, cyclase enzyme okay cycloguanyl cyclase enzyme okay which is responsible for the like which is responsible for the release of this cgmp okay release of this cgmp okay so this CGMP concentration will increases okay, internally like intracellularly in the vascular smooth muscle okay. So in this CGMP concentration if it is CGMP concentration increases okay what it will do it will directly impact on the this MLCK okay. So MLCK is <coughs> myosin light kinase okay myosin light okay light kinase okay. Uh, Right kinase. Okay, so once uh, it's impact this MLCK, then what will happen? It will uh, try to. Okay, so MLCK is in the form of phosphate form. Okay, so by activating by increasing the CFGMP concentration, it will acting on the MLCK, and MLCK phosphate is undergone for the dephosphorylation. Okay, now the dephosphorylation uh, will impact on the two important. Um, um, things here, here is about the myosin and actin okay so myosin and actin so and when they have increased the, this myosin and actin okay that will uh, main okay these are the two i mean important i mean uh, things i mean important uh, i mean important uh, 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 things which are produced in the inside vascular smooth, smooth muscle which is released to the relaxation okay relaxation of this vascular smooth muscle okay so this myosin actin what they will do they will uh, when they produce the, this myosin actin they will uh, involved in the relaxation mechanism of smooth muscle by decreasing the intracellular concentration of uh, the calcium ion okay so intracellular calcium ion uh, will be uh, reduced by uh, uh, by acting by releasing the, this myosin and acting okay and that leads to the the vascular smooth muscle is undergone for the relaxation okay the vascular smooth muscle undergone for the relaxation then what will happen the I mean, uh, the angina what we call angina pictoriasis or the ch like pressure like feeling on the heart will be relieved okay so we used to feel like okay uh, normal I mean uh, release the, relieve that pressure we used to feel as uh, a normal heartbeat okay so likewise this I mean uh, nitrodilators are uh, showing their mechanism action by relaxation of vascular smooth muscle okay by releasing the the free radical called nitric oxide right so in conclusion in summarized point of view right so the organ nitrates are nitrodilators okay our agents are pro drugs okay these are the pro drugs okay what they will do these are the so <coughs> in the pro drugs when they enter into the I mean, uh, vascular smooth muscle they will release us the because nitric oxide because that is why we are one, when we call flow drugs okay they are the drugs they will transfer the main active species okay inside that one the main active species here is about the this nitric oxide okay NO that is a free radical okay now whatever the uh, NO activates the soluble isoform of guanyl cyclase okay this is the main enzyme guanyl cyclase okay so thereby increasing the <coughs> intracellular level of CGMP okay or what I have mentioned here okay 
and it, turn, it turns the CGMP promotes the D phosphorylation. What I have mentioned there in the last diagram is a D phosphorylation of this myosin light chain kinase and uh, that is called MLCK what we have seen in the last slide okay that is what is that MLCK it is called myosin chain okay uh, myosin light kinase uh, okay light chain kinase okay so which is <coughs> leads to the reduction of the like, systolic okay which is a reduction of right systolic calcium plus 2 ions okay that is nothing but intracellular concentration of calcium plus ions will be decreased that leads to the relaxation of smooth muscle okay relaxation of smooth muscle when the moment the smooth muscle undergone for the relaxation then you used to feel the like pressure like feeling on the heart pain will be relieved okay that's how they are showing this uh, these nitrites organ nitrites or nitrodilators okay or vasodilators they are showing their mechanism action by producing the this I mean uh, nitro <coughs> nitric oxide free radical right so uh, after that mechanism action okay and uh, there are uh, two important i mean uh, uh, nitrodilators or vasodilators given for the synthesis okay so if you have seen the syllabus right uh, whatever the star mark right whatever the star mark uh, we have we have to be like uh, whatever the star mark we have right those star mark uh, star mark drug molecules we need to be studied for the synthesis especially synthesis okay so among uh, these vasodilators there are two molecules or two drugs okay two vasodilators or two organ nitrates has given for the synthesis okay or to learn the synthesis okay among these two one is about the nitroglycerin okay nitroglycerin okay so glycerin is well known very familiar molecule if you have seen this this is the glycerin right so glycerin is the simplest molecule okay so and well known molecule we have a is a alcohol it is nothing but it is a by product on the uh, hydrolysis right hydrolysis of this oils okay so i mean this is the glycerol okay so by product of the uh, hydrolysis of this i mean uh, uh, triglycerides of the fatty okay uh, fatty acids okay basically right so used to get glycerol okay high electricity is well known molecule okay is a glycerol is a molecule having the right one pri two primary alcohols and there is a one secondary alcohol okay but uh, uh, nitroglycerin okay is called as a nitroglycerin or a trinitroglycerin we can call it as a trinitroglycerin or nitroglycerin usually so it's a is exact molecule of glycerin having the two okay three nitro groups okay having the three nitro groups here okay there are three nitro groups here okay that means every OH group that means every OH of the this I mean uh, glycerin is uh, every hydrogen of the glycerin is replaced by the nitro group okay that is why it is called the trinitroglycerin or nitroglycerin okay so this is the structure of the nitroglycerin into the I mean three dimensional structure with the color coding of the atoms okay but but uh, synthesis we need to learn okay so for synthesis of this trinitroglycerin is simplest and easiest synthesis we have okay it is a single uh, step reaction we can able to produce the or generate the this trinitroglycerin okay right so here single step is what is the simplest raw material raw material or starting material is about the glycerin okay glycerin is highly commercially available I mean, uh, um, chemical which will be easily available okay for we know that glycerin is extensively used in preparation of the sanitizers also along with the alcohol okay now this glycerin uh, we need to take it and what we need to do we need to convert these three hydrogen is replaced or substituted by the uh, this nitro groups okay for that what we need to do we need to do the nitration right so nitration is well known very famous reaction in the organic chemistry we can use the nitration mixture okay so so 3 is to 1 ratio of sulfuric acid and nitric acid otherwise uh, the mixture of sulfuric acid and nitric acid is called as a um, nitration mixture we used to use it in the i mean uh, different reaction for the nitri nitration or uh, nitro group introduction okay so this nitration mixture now uh, you have taken and then if you react with this glycerin with the this nitration mixture okay what will happen so it will undergo the nitration of uh, these three three alcohols one two are secondary one is i mean two are primary one is secondary okay so and they will produce the okay they every every hydrogen is substituted or undergone otherwise every which is undergone for the nitration it will give the this tri nitro glycerin okay tri nitro 
glycerin with the removal of water molecule. Okay, the removal of water molecule. Likewise, it is the simplest synthesis single step reaction when the glycerol is reacted with the nitration mixture of sulfuric acid and nitric acid undergone for the glycerol molecule undergone for the nitration and finally it produces the or gives the or yields the, the trinitroglycerin as a product. Okay. Yeah. Next, when it comes to the another molecule given for the synthesis about the isosorbide dinitrate. Okay. So, if you have seen in the syllabus, okay, uh, MC, MC2 syllabus point of view, it is the isosorbide dinitrate is also a star marked, okay, star marked molecule, okay, star marked molecule. Okay. That means, so we need to be like uh, uh, learned about the extensively the synthesis of this isosorbide dinitrate. Okay. So, if you look at the, the structure of this isosorbide dinitrate, okay, so it is derived from the like it is derived from the like uh, isosorbide. Okay. It is derived from the isosorbide. Okay. The way they have written, this is the isosorbide structure. Okay. And if you do the nitration of isosorbide, you will get the isosorbide dinitrate. But when it to look at the complete structure, it is a cyclic molecule. It is a symmetrical, I mean, uh, cyclic molecule. Okay. Otherwise, bicyclic molecule, what we call specifically, with the oxygen, there are two oxygen, oxygen atoms in the in the same symmetrical direction. Okay, in this ring, and there are uh, two nitro groups are attached on the symmetrically on the isosorbide. Okay, that's why it's called isosorbide dinitrate. Now, how to synthesize? Okay. By looking, it's a little bit complex, but uh, we can synthesize this isosorbide dinitrate with the, I mean, a well-known, very famous uh, starting material with the simplest reactions. We can able to be prepared this isosorbide dinitrate. Okay. How? So, for the, I mean, uh, for the synthesis of this isosorbide, the starting material, okay, nothing but the starting material, the raw material, we can take it as a D-glucose. Okay. Right. So, D-glucose is well-known very famous molecule, the carbonated molecule which will give the a, a energetic molecule, which will give the okay, uh, energy to our body well-known. So, glucose is well-known very famous, famous starting material. Okay. But when it comes to the glucose structure, it is a, like a, a C6H12O6 is a, I mean, uh, is a molecular formula. When it comes to the structure, it is a structure, it is aldehyde, right? It is aldehyde uh, having the H and hydrogen and OH into the uh, definite, I mean, uh, direction, okay, glucose structure. It is a open cyclic um, structure of the glucose. Okay. When you take any glucose as a starting material, simply do the reduction okay, with the uh, hydrogen and the platinum as a catalyst, right? Hydrogen as a gas and followed by the platinum as a catalyst, okay. Nothing but hydrogen, okay. It is called as the hydrogenation, okay. Here, what will happen, okay, if you do the reduction, okay, what will happen? The reduction, the reducing functional group is about the aldehyde here, okay. It is a aldehyde. So, whatever the aldehyde will be there, it will undergo the reduction and it will convert the aldehyde into the alcohol, primary alcohol. Okay. So, during the reduction, aldehyde is converting into the, the primary alcohol. The moment when you reduce or do the do the reduction, do the reduction, okay, what will happen? So, the what are the D glucose is now converted into the D sorbitol. It is called a D sorbitol. It's a well known, very familiar excipient. I mean, excipient used for the different formulations. This D sorbitol. Okay. So this D sorbitol okay, is a similar kind of derived from the glucose, D glucose by the reduction of the hydrogen and platinum. Okay. Once you have D sorbitol, okay, then what you need to do? You need to uh, uh, react with the. We need to react with the sulfuric acid. Okay. Sulfuric acid is well known, very familiar. Is a king of chemical, and it is also act as a dehydrating agent. It is also act as a dehydrating agent. Okay. So, it will undergo when you react this uh, D sorbitol with the sulfuric acid, it will undergo the I mean, um, uh, dehydration or removal of water molecule, or, uh, and it will leads to give the one cyclic molecule called isosorbide. This gives, gives the isosorbide. That means, so the, uh, there are two five member, I mean, uh, cyclic ether link case with the bicyclic form, they will form. There are two OH groups are remained here. Okay. That means the two primary OHs are undergoing the removal of two water molecules and finally needs to give the isosorbide as a I mean, uh, final I mean, uh, molecule okay, by the removal of water molecule. Once you have isosorbide, okay, then uh, this isosorbide having the two secondary alcohol groups. This is the secondary alcohol. There is a one more secondary alcoholic group. Okay. Now, if you have taken the like isosorbide as a starting material, uh, isosorbide, eh, do the nitration. 
okay simply the way we have done for the nitroglycerin okay so we need to take the mixture of sulfuric acid and uh, uh, nitric acid okay in a particular ratio i think 3 is to 1 and uh, if you do the nitration what will happen what are the two secondary alcohol groups present in the isosorbate dinitrate will undergo for the nitration okay and the two OH groups are second two OH groups are converting into the uh, uh, two nitro groups okay that's why it is called the okay, isosorbide dinitride okay isosorbide dinitride as a final product which is to get it um, by the uh, nitration of isosorbide okay that's how we can also easily synthesize this isosorbide dinitride so and then after this learning this I mean uh, after learning the both senses of this I mean um, nitroglycerin as well as the isosorbide dinitride now we have a general idea about the uses of vasodilators okay usually right so we know that right vasodilators are the one of the I mean, uh, uh, important uh, I mean, uh, drug molecules they used to treat for the this congest to heart failure chf or anti angina okay nothing but angina okay the same that is the main use of this vasodilators basically okay what they will do they used to mainly use, use uh, mainly this vasodilators are used for the like, systemic hypertension okay right like, systemic I mean, if you have any kind of hypertension like right? nothing but bp okay so if you have any kind of systemic hypertension we can use it for this vasodilators to relieve that i mean uh, use it for the treatment of the systemic hypertension any kind of heart failure system uh, heart failure condition or congestive heart failure condition okay we can use this uh, vasodilators right and followed by the and uh, peripheral uh, vascular disease okay, peripheral vascular disease okay, any kind of related to the this vascular disease also can be used for the uh, you can be treated by using this vasodilators and followed by the Reynolds disease it is also related to the heart or vascular smooth muscle which can be also treated by using this vasodilators and followed by the pulmonary hypertension okay we can also use it for the treatment of this pulmonary hypertension right now uh, uh, that is about the general use of these vasodilators, but uh, we are going to specifically learn about the okay, these I mean uh, uh, organo um, uh, nitriles or are, um, this nitrodilators, especially given for the synthesis like uh, 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 nitroglycerin as well as the isosorbate dinitride. Okay, so when it comes to the like uh, uh, glycerol trinitride or uh, nitroglycerin, okay, so it can be available in the form of uh, both I mean. Uh, uh, different process forms basically basically uh, what is the main effect they will relax is the blood vessel blood vessel walls this uh, dinitroglycerin okay and dilates the coronary arteries okay so it will involve the uh, dilates the coronary arteries and reduces the workload of heart okay whatever the workload of heart will be reduced okay and followed by the use is mainly the management of angina pictoris nothing but uh, angina and followed by the heart failure conditions and followed by the myocardial infraction okay and uh, these argon nitrides like especially this uh, triangulazeryl i mean uh, nitroglycerin is have the i mean uh, duration of action around 20 to 30 minutes i think around half an hour of uh, their action is on by around half an hour okay right so when it comes to the i mean uh, isosorbate dinitride okay so it is also commercially available i mean very with, with less cost okay it is commercially available okay so uh, this I mean especially this isosorbate nitrate will be used for the angina okay in addition to the medication of congestive heart failure okay along with the CHF right used for the treatment of uh, angina as well as the for um, angina and it is also available for the oral tablets uh, both in extended release as well as the slow release that means it is also available in the tablets form okay slow release as well as the extended release okay so uh, the uh, the action of isosorbate dinitrate is 30 uh, minutes that okay right around 30 minutes and followed by the onset of action of one extended delivery 12 to 24 hours okay that means it is also have the mode of action around half an hour of time so but we can able to be extend that it, its mode of action or duration of action with the 12 to 24 hours due to the slow release of this uh, isosorbate dinitrate formulations yeah so that is I mean uh, with that I mean with that uh, the especially <coughs> vasodilators especially organitals and other their structures their mechanism action their synthesis okay given the syllabus and followed by the their uses we have been learned okay so when it comes to the next topic uh, is about the calcium channel blockers okay next topic uh, is given in the anti-angina is about the the calcium channel blockers okay 
when it comes to the calcium channel blockers name itself indicating the calcium channel blockers okay that means they are going to block the this calcium channel so what is this calcium channel blockers and how they are blocking their uh, how they are going to be blocking this calcium channel blockers and how they are increasing decreasing the concentration of this calcium plus 2 ions into the vascular smooth muscle we are going to be learning in the next 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 next, uh, next upcoming classes and and presently we are going to focus about the what are calcium channel blockers and um, like veram pill and uh, bipiridil and amaldopine and followed by the feldopine and uh, nicar nicarbidipine and followed by the nimodopine and their structures okay we are going to be learn okay in this class okay yeah so veram pill okay uh, so veram pill is a uh, one of the well known very famous uh, calcium channel blocker so when it comes to the veram pill veram pill is a if you look at the structure st structure look like very big but basically it is a I mean uh, uh, Amine, okay. Otherwise, okay, substituted amine derivatives having the cyanide and, and this amine benzene uh, methoxy benzene rings in their structures. Okay, this is how its structure looks like. It's a, basically, it's a amine part, and followed by the remaining will be the different attachments with the aromatic ring having the methoxy group substitution along with the one cyanide group in its structure. Okay, and uh, another structure is given about the okay, um, bipedial. That about the bipedial, right? Otherwise, okay. Or is bipedal hydrochloride. Okay, so here uh, it is also a structure of the, uh, this uh, bipedal hydrochloride. Okay, it is in the form, it is in the form of uh, hydrochloric um, uh, acid salt. Okay, it is also one of the I mean uh, amine derivative. It is also substituted amine derivative. Okay, and along with one you have a like a uh, substituted pyridol okay pyridolidine derivative along with the this isopropyl uh, ether linkage. Okay, next. So yeah. So next, uh, given the uh, syllabus about the to learn the structures about the diltiazem hydrochloride. It is also called as diltiazem hydrochloride. Okay, this structure of diltiazem and it is in the form of hydrochloric acid salt. Okay, so diltiazem is very famous and famil uh, familiar. I mean, uh, uh, this calcium channel blocker. Okay, it is having the okay, right? Uh, this I mean, uh, this ring like right, a very bigger size ring having sulfur and. Uh, nitrogen as a hetero atom and with the different attachments of aromatic ring and it is also one of the substituted amine derivative as a key important role played for the this calcium channel um, uh, blocking activity okay another is about the this I mean uh, dihydropyridine derivative these are comes under the dihydropyridine derivative is called nifidipine okay so this is the structure of this dihydropyridine this is the structure of dihydropyridine okay these are all comes under the dihydropyridine derivatives they have a very good uh, action uh, uh, they are, they are mostly they are acting as a this calcium uh, channel blockers okay the different substitute derivative of this dihydropyridine derivatives are well known very familiar among this one is about the nifidipine is one of the well known famous i mean uh, calcium channel blocker with the dihydropyridine derivative with the different substitutions okay yeah. so next is about the um, next two structures given the syllabus is about the right amaldopine okay and amaldopine okay it is also dihydropyridine derivative okay and uh, remaining substitution will vary okay remaining this methyl ester derivative will be common and remaining substitution will vary okay and uh, that leads to the like delivered enhancement of this uh, enhancement uh, or different structural activity relationships of the this calcium channel blockers okay amaldopine okay another is about the like uh, philodopine okay philodopine it is also a uh, this uh, uh, dihydropyridine derivative okay, is a key important I mean uh, core moiety which is responsible for the this calcium channel blocking activity okay yeah. Yeah. and uh, the last two okay the last two okay are the uh, nicardipine okay another is about the nicardipine okay and this nicardipine also it is also a uh, dihydropyridine derivative as a uh, dihydropyridine derivative and uh, it is also comes in dihydropyridine derivative with the different substitutions okay um, and followed by the nimodopine followed by the nimodopine okay and it is also a uh, nimodopine is also a dihydropyridine derivative with a varying substitutions okay so basically dihydropyridine derivatives and the substituted amine derivatives are the two main important classes of this uh, this calcium channel blockers okay so so far what we have learned we have learned about the what are calcium channel blockers generally and their structures okay in terms of I mean uh, gen just their structures we have seen in the uh, main scaffold present in the or uh, present in the these uh, calcium channel blockers.